Now the SQL Server Analysis Services to be able to work in the SQL Server Analysis Services and design the cubes, uh, we need to go again to the Microsoft Visual Studio and we just need to go to the file, say new project and it will give us uh, multiple options. So on the left hand side, we can see that there's an option for the analysis services. And within the analysis services, we can select either a tabular project or a multi-dimensional project. So for now, we'll be selecting the multi-dimensional project. To select the multi-dimensional project, it will assign some uh, random name. So you can change the name as per your you know, business meaning, whatever name is needed for your project. So for now, we'll just put SSI as, let's say, demo. And say OK. So it will open up a window for you wherein we'll be able to design the analysis services cubes. Now, this is the window that it has opened. What we can see that there is a solution explorer on the right hand side and it has various options. It has taken the solution name as SSIS demo the one that we gave while creating the project and the project name within this solution is SSIS demo itself. And then there are various options and there are properties related to those options. And there are similar buttons on the top as we saw in the SSIS. So this should actually be SSIS. So let's just rename and change it to SSAS. This is not IES. SSAS demo and change the project name as well just right click and change you can change the names as per your requirement okay so now we have changed the name okay so now before we go ahead and um, and start designing our cubes and see the different aspects of designing the cube. Uh, before that, we have to make sure that we have installed the analysis services correctly. So the analysis services designer, which we are accessing through the Microsoft Visual Studio, okay, that is part of the SSDD executable. So when you're uh, installing the SQL Server data tools, this will be installed and you have to make the proper selection. But to be able to browse through your cube, you need to deploy your cube every time to your SQL Server engine. The SQL Server engine, you have to go to your SQL Server Management Studio. All right. So while installing your SQL Server Management Studio, you have to make sure that you have installed the analysis services part as well. So as I mentioned yesterday, you have to go to your SQL Server installable file and you have to start a new, you have to start a standalone installation for a new feature. If you have not already installed analysis services. So once you select that, once you go to feature selection, you have to make sure that you have selected analysis services. Okay, so you have to go to the custom installation and you have to make sure that you have selected analysis services, okay? And then it will ask you to perform, it will give you the default option of perform a new installation of SQL Server. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. Otherwise, if it is already installed, you can just select the second option, which is add features on an existing instance of SQL Server. Okay, so what is it, whatever is your instance, just add it, add the analysis services to that instance, and then it will ask you that which server mode you want to install. So you can install any mode as per your choice. For now, I've installed the multi-dimensional and data mining mode. Okay, so you have to make sure that you have uh, connected, you have installed your analysis services correctly. on your SQL Server. And once you have installed it, you can make a check as well. You can go to your 
SQL Server Management Studio and go to the Object Explorer. Go to the Correct button over here. Just click on it, and you'll see that you have options to select to connect to the services as well, apart from your database engine, which we connect to for executing our queries. So just select Analysis Services, and it will ask you the server name. So it might it would be your local host if you have uh, installed it on your machine itself. And just say a connect. And once you connect, you'll see that the Microsoft Analysis Server, you would be getting a connection for that. You'll have your databases, all right, wherein you'll be having all your project names, which you'll be deploying and so on. Okay. And another thing which we can check is uh, go to your start menu. Go to your SQL Server folder, and there would be something called the Configuration Manager. So just go on that Configuration Manager. Click on it. And then once it opens, you'll be able to see what all services are running on your SQL Server installation. Okay. So for example, here I can see the SQL Server Analysis Services is running on my MS SQL Server instance. Okay, so all these services should be running. So if you're not sure whether you have installed Analysis Services on your SQL Server, you can directly go first to the SQL Server Configuration Manager, which is within your SQL Server folder. So wherever you have installed SQL Server, you have to go to that folder. You'll have the option for the configuration manager. You can go to your configuration manager. If you do not see the analysis services over here, that means they're not installed as part of your SQL Server, then you have to go and install them, okay? And they should be in the running mode. So if they are for any reason in the stopped mode, just right click on them and start, okay? Okay, so going back to a designer window, this is how it looks like, and we have now the option to design a cube. Now, designing a cube, uh, there are very steps involved to designing a cube. The first step is to connect to the data source. Now, the data source that we are going to be using in our case is the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. So, AdventureWorks Data Warehouse is simply a database in a SQL Server. So we need to be able to connect to the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse, and then we'll be accessing the dimension and fact tables which are provided within, these, within this data warehouse. So now I have to create a connection to this data warehouse. That is my step one for designing a queue. So going back to the designer, I will go to the data sources and right click, and I have an option to create a new data source. So I'll click on new data source, and a wizard will pop up. So this is a welcome to the data source wizard. Let's click on next. Okay. So create a data source based on another object. No, create a source based on an existing or a new connection. This is what we are going to choose. So uh, it's already showing the connection for me because I have already connected to it earlier. If it is not showing for you, what you need to do is similar. Just click on new. Okay, and select your server over here and select your database. Okay, and say okay. So it will create a data connection for you. Just click on that, do a next. Then there is an option to provide your impersonation information. Now, this is important in case of analysis services. So you have to provide an option. You have to either provide an option to use the service account, or you have to provide the option to use a specific Windows username and password. So if you're using Windows authentication on your SQL Server, you can use this option. When you use this option, then you have to uh, provide your username as well as there should be a password. So if you are using Windows authentication and you have not configured a password for Windows, then you need to configure a password to be able to use this option. Otherwise, you can use the service account as well. And then you have to grant the access to your service account. Okay. 
So we'll use a specific Windows username and password to a uh, next and finish over here. Okay. Now I have created a data source. That means I have connected to my Adventure Works data warehouse. Okay. And I need to configure my Windows ID. So let me get the server name as usual. So my server name is going to be select server name. And I'm going to go back to the designer and click on this. Go to the impersonation information and put that information. So this is my server name. This is going to be my ID, user ID. I'm going to put the password over here. Okay. Just save from here. So now I have a data source with which I can work. Now, this through this data source, I have connected to a database, so I have access to all the tables in the database. But for designing a cube, we do not directly connect to a data source. We have to go to the next step and design a data source view. So this is the data source view. Again, right click on it and do a new data source view. We'll again get a wizard. So welcome to the data source view wizard. Do a next. It's asking us to connect to a data source. So we have already created the data source as Adventure Works Data Warehouse. If we would have directly gone to this step and not created a data source before, then it would have also given us an option to create a new data source over here. So we could have done that as well. Then just go to Next. And it's given an option to connect to a data source because for a cube, you could have multiple data sources as well. So you could connect to a data source based on for a project you could have multiple data sources so you can create different data source views for your different data sources okay now we have selected the data source that we want to use do an x over here and now it's giving us a list of all the tables which are present in this data source so now for the data source view our task is to select only those tables which we would be needing for the cube Okay, so we do not need to select all the tables over here. We'll be building a data source view containing only the tables to which we would need access for the cube. So now let's select some dimension tables. So, or let's go and directly select a fact table as a first step. So these are some of the fact tables. Let's select the fact internet sales. Select it, put on the arrow button and that table will be selected as part of your data source view. Now you can see that there's a tab over here that says add related tables. So if you click on that, then based on the foreign keys in this uh, fact table, it is able to pick all the related dimension and other fact tables, which are related by foreign keys to this table. So it can do this automatically. So you can use that as well if you want to make sure that all the related tables have been uh, used in the data source view. Otherwise, you can select them manually as well. So let's say I don't want the dim sales territory uh, currently, so I can just move it back. I do not want the fact internet sales reason, so I can just move it back. Now I have the dim currency product date, customer promotion. I want one more table, let's say. I want the dim geography table. So let's take the dim geography table and put it over here as well. Okay. I don't want a dim promotion table, so let's move it back. I don't want a dim currency table, so let's move it back. Let's keep it simple. Now for the product table, uh, I want to dig down into the product table, let's say. Or let's just uh, take the dim product for now and see how it uh, creates a data source view. Do a next, and then it is giving us a summary of all the tables it is going to take from the Adventure Works Data Warehouse, and it's going to give the same name to our data source view as well. So if you want, we can change the name at this point and do a finish. So now you can see that a .dsv file has been created over here, and that is .dsv stands for dot data source view. The data source has an extension of .ds, which is .dss data source. 
and now we have a view created which is called the adventure works data warehouse data source view now we can uh, we can navigate through this view so you just simply need to double click on this and it will open up your uh, view designer window over here so now you can see all the tables that this is connected to so this is a fact table main fact table it's connected to dim date which is a dimension it's connected to dim product another dimension it's connected to dim customer another dimension and it's connected to dim geography as well so let's right click on dim geography uh, table and let's say i want to i do not want to use this table for now let's just delete it from a dsv so it's just asking us to confirm the following objects will be deleted let's say okay for now okay so the reason we have deleted it is to show you the structure now that we have so this is a <coughs> star schema because the fact table is directly linked to all the dimension tables okay so this now becomes a star schema this is a star schema where the fact table is directly linked to all the dimension tables now let's right click on this and say that we want to add or remove tables then it will give you the data source all right it will give you the data source from which you want the tables again you'll have all the list of the tables that we want so let's include dim geography here and let's include the product category and the product subcategory tables as well and say okay so now my view has refreshed and i can see that there are more tables and now i have my let me take the name geography table over here or just put it over here for a better view this is my geography table then i have my uh the dim product table let's just pull it over here and let's pull these two tables okay. or other pull the name product up okay this is it no better way okay so this is name product now this is the customer okay so now what we can see that this is this fact table fact internet sales it's directly linked to the dim date table so this it's directly linked to one of the dimensions then this table is linked to the dim customer dimension but the dim geography dimension it is only linked to the dim customer dimension in this case it's not directly linked to the fact table also the dim product category and the dim product sub category dimensions so the dim product sub category is linked to the dim product and then the dim category is linked to the dim product sub category okay so this is how this is so this is in this case we can see that all the dimension tables are not directly linked to the fact table so if they are not directly linked to the fact table then it becomes a snowflake schema